so there's a lot of confusion as to exactly what FAD or back in the day used to be CAD that you see on the front axles of the JL Wrangler. Um, Jim, can you explain to us a little bit of what this is all about and what we're looking at? CAD, which was central axle disconnect, or FAD, front axle disconnect, this actually was around back in the 70s. And it was a way to uh, have an axle that had a disconnect feature that would reduce friction and improve fuel economy. In the 70s during the Arab oil embargo, that became important. But it was abandoned because a lot of customers didn't really care for it. A lot of people also wanted to keep their manual locking hubs. But it's back, and it's back because it's here. It's an inexpensive way to simulate some of the advantages of locking hubs, but it doesn't give you 100% of the advantages. So what are some of the advantages? What exactly would this actually do for a person? So if you look inside here, this is an axle shaft, and this axle shaft engages with the differential, and then there's another one that engages with it and comes out over here and has the U-joint that you're used to seeing. So what happens is there's a collar here, and when you're in two-wheel drive, driving down the highway, this collar moves over to one side and just rests. Since it's not engaging both here and here, it allows these two shafts to spin independently. So what ends up happening is this wheel is turning, so it's turning this axle shaft in a forward direction. It's spinning the differential gear inside the diff, which is a selectable diff, so it can be open or locked. And obviously in two-wheel drive, the car will only let you drive with open. So that starts spinning this axle shaft in the opposite direction, and then this shaft is disconnected so that this shaft can turn up in the, in the forward direction with the wheel. Now, the disadvantage of this, of course, is this mechanism is a device, and it's a device that obviously could give you a problem. Uh, it also doesn't give you the same level of disconnect. When I have locking hubs on an axle, and I unlock the hubs, nothing's turning. Here, even though your, dis your front axle is disconnected, it's really just disconnecting this shaft from this shaft, but these shafts are still turning, but because the differential is allowing them to turn in opposite directions, you don't see the pinion turning. So it does reduce some of the drag and friction, and it's relatively low cost compared to adding a locking hub mechanism. So the factory chose it because it's great for what they're trying to accomplish, which is uh, better fuel economy, uh, lower emissions, and also carbon footprint improvements. So the bigger disadvantage is that I think most of us or people who are familiar with CAD is the fact that, like Jim said, it's a mechanism that can fail. It can have issues. CAD was plagued with problems mainly because it was vacuum driven. This is an electronic driven unit, so it may last longer. Time will tell. We're not exactly sure. But assuming that it does fail, kind of out of options. So. There are a lot of people who want to replace the FAD system, and so there is a question, even with the Pro Rock 44, it does get rid of it, but are there any drawbacks to the fact that you no longer have the FAD? Will there be issues in terms of me being able to use four-wheel drive or uh, anything else? So as you will have to do some things. So when you, when you buy a Pro Rock 44 or any other front replacement axle for your JL, the computer is watching this device to determine what position, whether it's engaged or disengaged all the time. So uh, one of the drawbacks you're gonna have with anything that does not have a, a disconnect is there's a little more energy being spent to just rotate a front axle that's not really driving the vehicle, it's just being spun. Now, uh, we've been doing that for a long time on JK, so there's a fuel economy hit there. It's not huge. The other uh, thing is that the computer is watching this, so you need to buy a calibration tool that tells the computer that this is no longer operational, and then the computer doesn't expect to see it be engaged or disengaged, so it's, it's really looking past it. If you don't do that, when the computer engages four-wheel drive or lockers on a JL, the first thing it looks for is to see what position that's in. So if you haven't you know, gone in with one of these devices and told it you don't have that, you're gonna find that your sway bar won't work properly, your lockers won't engage, uh, you will have four-wheel drive because you put the transfer case in, but until this gets squared away, those other computer will just stop. Well, the front axle disconnect is not where I expect it to be. I don't see it. I don't, something must be wrong. So it's just not going to allow these other things to work properly. So you have to do that. So we're looking at another front axle from a jail. And in this case, you can see this is the, the motor for the FED? Correct, correct. And here's the electrical connection for it. This is the connection that the computer's reading to both activate it 
to open or activate it to close or to just make sure it's what position it's in. So it has a position sensor inside as well. So if you took this off and you left it plugged in, uh, would you even need something like a taser or? Uh... Uh, I don't, I'm not sure I'm gonna go so far as to say that you do or you don't. Um, there's still too many things out there, <laughs> different calibrations and things. But let's say you took this device, you just mounted it up somewhere. The fork that's in there moving that collar would just move. And <laughs> the computer would not really know for sure uh, whether or not it's doing anything to the axle itself because it's not attached to the axle. But it would move the fork, the motor would move the fork, the position sensor would tell the computer that the fork is now in the open position or the lock position. So I, I think that's another way to skin the cat if you don't have uh, one of these uh, calibration devices that you talked about. <laughs> okay, cool. So early on, there were a few people who were talking about the need to maybe taking apart your transfer case and maybe pulling out a synchros or something to that effect. Is, is that true? Are we going to have to deal with that with the Pro Rock 44? So when we built the Code 1 car, we did that because everything was so early. No one was really sure. So and you we, who started it. And so we, we <laughs> did that and we actually put it in a video. So, but what we've kind of found is that it's not necessary. A lot of people are not even touching their transfer case and are running just fine. Perfect. So it's easy as that. You can go ahead and replace your front axle, get rid of that FAD, prevent any future problems, and not have to worry about tinkering around with your transfer case, but you are going to need something like a taser or Superchips calibration tool to make it all possible.